What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and today I'm going to revamp this design. Alright, so uh, a member of our Discord, SXF, uh, sent this design to me and this is part of a new series in which I'm going to uh, get uh, designs from my Discord members and I'll try to improve them or remake them uh, to give you guys some tips and insights on what I should do in certain uh, situations in design, I guess. Uh, this is an artwork from, uh, like I said, SXF on our Discord server. So before we dive into this, if you want to have your design featured in this series, uh, join us on Discord and just drop it down in one of the design channels. So I think this is, is a design based on a short story or something. Uh, I'm not really sure if that's true, but that's what I read from this like short text. But yeah, this is what was delivered for me. What's actually really cool here is that there are um, dread shapes in here, which SXF bought in the Dreadlabs web store. So uh, a few things come to mind here, and that's uh, mainly spacing, positioning, because the spacing is kind of, well, not all over the place, I guess, but there could use some, it could use some improvements. And as you can see, I don't have the font of this. Um, so what I thought might be a good idea is to drag this into Illustrator, try to reposition stuff how I would do this, and then, yeah, I'll just show you the process of this. All right, I'm just going to make a quick snapshot of this uh, by pressing Command, Option, and Shift, and then pressing E on my keyboard. And this brings up a merged version of everything that's visible so far in our document, as you can see. Uh, and I'm just going to drag this into Illustrator. Scale it up real quick. Okay, so this is what we got, and let me just make a new artboard. Take a black rectangle, or a square in our case. And make our foreground color white, and let's just start drawing. Uh, so I'm going to lock these up first, so we can't really move them around. And um, the reason why I like to do this into Illustrator is just because you can work a lot quicker with shapes, borders, edges, basically that kind of thing. And I also feel like working with typography and stuff like that is way quicker in Illustrator for some reason. Uh, but that's just my workflow. First thing I'm going to do is pick out a font that matches with this one because I am I don't have the font uh, here and I'm not going to download it illegally. So let's see what happens if we try Nimbus, which is the main Dreadlabs font. All right, it's not too bad, but it needs to be a little bit more extended, so... Realized I didn't really uh, match the typing out well. But this comes pretty close, and I think I'm going to work with this font. This is an Adobe font slash typekit, and it's called Adriana Extended. The first thing I want to do, now that we have defined our fonts, is make a sort of, some sort of spacing grid. And this is something that I always do in these artworks. I'm just going to pick a random color, which is uh, red in this case, or I can guess peach-ish. And let's make it 100 by 100 pixels. And make sure that this is in the top corner here. And I'm going to copy and paste these in every corner here. Uh, so now that we've done that, um, we can use these squares as kind of a guideline in terms of spacing if every other uh, aspect in this artwork. So let's just say we have this block of text here. Uh, let me just uh, whip that up real quick, copy it from Photoshop. All right, let's make sure that this is actually the font that we want to use here. So Adriana extended. I think if we make it like 32 points, that's fine. Make sure that the spacing is optical the height 100% and the width 100%. Uh, Let's make sure that, it's, that that's the case in our other one here as well. And that actually is the case. Okay, cool. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that the text here is uh, aligned to the corner of this square here. And once we start working with the uh, dread shapes here, let me just grab those uh, real quick. So this is a round object, and round objects basically have a some sort of border. And as you, if you if you look at the fonts here, uh, let's see if this is a good example. Yeah, okay. So as you see, uh, I drew a line over the M here, and this is basically like the top line. I'm not sure what it's called again because I'm not really an expert in typography. But as you can see, let me just make it red. These circles of the C and the O 
are uh, going over these lines as you can see and that's because visually they need to be a little bit bigger otherwise they optically don't look correct i guess and that's the same with round shapes here so let's go to the center here of our shape and i think something like this should be fine right let's scale it down to about the size we want to and i think what we should do is uh, just group these for a second and make sure that the rectangle here the red rectangle is aligning with uh, our text box here but what we want to do first is duplicate this uh, square and put it here and now we can align these squares like this all right um so we want four of these uh so let's just go like this and make sure that the uh, block of the text here is also aligning with a square here. So the easy way to create four shapes here with the same distance in between them is just removing these rectangles and we're going to make a blend out of those. And if you don't know what a blend is, don't worry, I'll cover it real quick. So if you have a square here and a circle here and you make a blend out of this, basically there will be a transition between the shapes as you can see. So yeah, the further away I drag my circle, you can see that there's a square and the, every step the square will get more rounded until it becomes a, an ellipse. But basically because we are using two shapes, the shape won't transform, but we can use those uh, steps of the blend, I guess. So let's just select both of these, go to object, blend, make, and just like that we have a uh, blend with four uh, thread shapes in the same like distance I guess. Uh, now we want to make a square and I think what I want to do is scale this picture up uh, so that it fills up more because the negative space here is just a little bit too much uh, in my opinion. So let's just drag one of these uh, shapes, one of these. So let's drag one of these squares here and make sure that they will align with the text box here which is here. And as you can see, I'm kind of like planning out a grid based on uh, these like peach colored squares. Uh, let's first do the text on the right here. And same goes here with rounded shapes. I think the uh, question mark here can overlap just a little bit over this pink uh, like guide shape here. All right, let's duplicate this. Oh, actually what I, I didn't even realize this, I think Okay, yeah, so this is what's mirrored. That's actually pretty cool. I didn't even realize that at first. Um, so what we can do is uh, we duplicated one and I did that by selecting my text, pressing Ctrl C, Command C and Command F and then go to Transform, Reflect uh, and choose Vertical. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to give this a stroke uh, instead of like a fill. And let's just do that real quick by pressing Shift X. So what I don't really like about uh, stroke and text is if you click here, uh, the stroke will be aligned in the middle. As you can see, when the align stroke here, uh, you cannot choose the other options. And that's because it's still a text object. So what we can do is uh, right mouse click and click on create outlines. And now we should be able to uh, put it outside or inside. And I think for this, I'm gonna go with inside. And I'm not sure, maybe I wanna have so a little bit of spacing. And so what we can do is duplicate this square and take half of that. So 50 pixels and uh, let's just recolor it to maybe like this, a little bit more of a magenta color uh, so we can see that these smaller squares are actually a different guideline. Now we can just duplicate this one again, do the same here. Wait, let me just select both of them at the same time. That's easier. Now we can just hold other option and drag them over here. All right, so let's see what's over here. Okay, we got some like arrow shapes and a uh, barcode and a double square, okay. Let's align these to the center and color them white. And I'm just gonna go and quickly cre recreate this. Oh, uh, I think there's still a blend here. We can delete that. Align this uh, to the uh, rectangle here. Oh. Okay, so now it's aligned to the rectangle and let's up the stroke width a little bit so it will match with the width of the text here. 
Okay, and we can group this now. And what's actually a shame now that I realize it is that we deleted the squares here because we actually need a square here. And I'm not sure if this is the case. So what, what, what I want to do is I want to create a guideline in green. Okay, and this guideline needs to be at the 50% height of our uh, dread shapes. And now I can just easily select both of these squares. And now I can use the reflect tool. And by pressing here and clicking on the other anchor point by holding alt or option. So now we have two guide squares uh, that are basically uh, the same distance from the middle uh, of our dread shapes on the top and at the bottom. Okay, so let's dive into this group here and make a duplicate of the square here. And by going to object, path, offset path. Okay, so now we're at the offset path menu and I wanna make sure that the spacing between the numbers and the first border is about the same as with the second like border. And I think something like this should be fine. All right, so uh, now that we have done that, let's just do this one. And I'm not really sure how this is done, but let me just do it the way that I think uh, I would go and approach this. So let's just go with a rectangle here. Uh, right click, transform, shear. And let's shear it 20 degrees. Uh, command C, Command F to duplicate it. Drag it over to the side. Right mouse click, transform, reflect. All right, neat little trick. Uh, let's fill these up. And I want to make sure that this one's aligned to 50% uh, of the width of this one. So let's just select this, go to object, path, add anchor points. And if we press our direct selection tool now, you can see that there's an anchor point here. All right, so now that there's an anchor point here, we can just use the pen tool, make a quick little line here. And by dragging this into uh, this line, the smart guides will recognize when it's uh, on the line here, which is at 50% of the width of this line. So we can delete this and now we are set here. Let's just go to the pathfinder and merge these. And there we have our shape. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. Okay, so what we can do now is the same thing that we did with the dread shapes here. So we can just drag this one down all the way until it's aligned perfectly with this one. And we can select both of them, go to object path, or, or sorry, object blend make. And now this is just a little bit too much. So if we go to object blend and blend options, instead of smooth color, we can do specified steps. And with the preview checked on, we can just lower this amount until we are satisfied with the number of steps here. And I think eight is enough. Let's just align this with our square here again. And we're gonna grab our 50% square. Make sure that's aligned with the corner of this outer uh, thing. Okay, we're good to go. And we can just duplicate this once more, like so. Okay, and now we just do this one more time. And okay, so there are two images coming here with a text block here with I'm feeling lost and two circles. So what I don't really feel about this is that it's really empty. We're here with the negative space and I like to fill these parts in even if it's with a subtle line. Uh, so let's just do that right now. I am going to grab our text here. Uh, make it a, I think. Yeah, what comes after? Uh, let's just change the text here. Okay, I think the text should be a little bit like more extended. So uh, quick and easy way to do that. I know it's not like the proper case. I know I should probably search for another font which fits my requirements a bit better. But we can lower the text here to, I think, yeah, 70% is fine. I'm gonna just draw a line with my pen tool here. Hold shift to have it drag all the way down. And make the stroke like the same color as the guidelines here. Okay. Um, now we can do the same thing with our uh, blend like we did here and here. Uh, but because these are only just three of them, uh, let's just go and hold other option and drag this one down and do it once more by pressing Control or Command D on the keyboard. Okay, now we can just group this. Uh, let's see, there are, are these just circles? Okay, there's just circles. Um, so let's grab the ellipse tool and 
like I said earlier, if we use an ellipse like this, let's just make sure that it's the same uh, width in the stroke as this one. This can overlap just a little bit, so I'm going to just press three pixels up and three pixels uh, to the left. And make it a little bit smaller. Just like this. And were these like on the corners? Yeah, they were on the corners. Okay, so grab this and drag it. And maybe like 50% to here. Okay, yeah, so there's like a half a circle in between here. And the way I did that so quickly is just holding alt or option. Make sure that they intersect. And your smart guides will just tell once this edge is over here. When they just uh, let you know that it's intersecting again. All right. Um, now we can just group these. Put them over here, make them align with this line. And I want to drag these over here. One, two, three. These can be a little bit smaller. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to grab the center here of this uh, lower uh, left circle and go all the way to the upper right circle and make a stroke. Again, make sure that's the same width again. Just select both of these and both of these. Press copy, command F. Let's just merge them all together into one group and then create a compound path of them. So by pressing command eight, we now have a compound path as you can as you can see here. Let's go to object, path, offset path, and take 24 pixels because that's what we did here as well. And now we basically have a compound path of these and we can use it to cut out the rectangle like this. Okay, and now we can just align the text properly like this. And I think we should just up these a few pixels. So one, two, three, by holding shift, so it's actually 30. And let's select all of this again, but then with the text. One, two, three. Okay, cool. So what I wanna do is grab these like 50% squares again. And we can actually delete this line And we can go all the way to here. Make sure that we will intersect with, yeah, this uh, circle here, like this. And then we go one, two, three pixels in. And what we can do now is we can just get these squares here, get them all the way to the uh, front. Let's just hide them for now so we can group all of this together and now we can just group the squares together as well and now we can just move this as one block and the outer borders are actually the squares which makes this easier to like plan out all right so let's just see if we can get like okay this is about like the same size as the picture frame will be uh, okay, so now that I'm seeing it, I guess I have been a little bit generous with the width here, but that's, I think, all right, because we want to make this a little bit bigger even. So yeah, let's just see how this goes. This is actually really cool. Okay, so what I want to do, I think, is get this picture uh, rotated 90 degrees so it will be like on its side, like this. And then we have more room to increase the uh, scale of this image. So... I just make it into a like picture frame with the same stroke width as all the other ones. Right now, can we can just scale it up until it hits this border? And what we can do now is just put this up there so this will match. Okay, so this doesn't really leave a lot of room. 
uh, here, which is a little bit disappointing. So let's see how to fix this. Let's go to general section and make sure that the skill stroke and effects is turned off and we can grab all of this. Okay, so I don't really like want to ruin all the spacing that we did here. So I think what I want to do is put this at the bottom here. All right, then we can just bring these pictures in here. Uh, let's go with whatever height uh, they will be if we put this in the middle. Okay, so the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to ma make this the full height uh, and width that we have available here in this like space. And I'm going to make a square uh, based on the outer uh, edges of our block here, which is, I don't know how much, but uh, we can just align this with the other square or the other rectangle. And then we can just punch it out. And now we have two pictures and if I'm correct, this should fit right in the middle, like this. All right, so now we have two, like a little bit more square based picture frames. I hope that's okay. And now we're gonna make the barcode here. Uh, and there's actually like a cool uh, way to do this. Um, let's just go and grab the guides here, put them down here. Um, so if you guys have noticed, these uh, strokes are going, are aligned on the center and that doesn't align with this. So what I'm gonna do real quick is select both of these, click on the stroke and align it to the inside. And I wanna do the same with all of these uh, like rectangles that are on the outer uh, edges. And I think these are the only two ones. So let's go again to stroke, align to the uh, inside. Okay, now that we have our guide set up again, let's go to type and this is a free font, which is called code 128. And if we just type red labs, uh, you don't see it because it's black now, but it just types in barcode. So you don't have to create all of these squares on your own or whatever. Um, so yeah, if you just go and create these into outlines, you can just align them however you fit, you see fit. So I'm just gonna go and make these, I think the same height as one of these blocks. So I'm just gonna go and duplicate these and now we can just resize them. All right. Okay, so here uh, is just one more line. Let's make this the same stroke height as like the usual in our project now. Two is just the same, like just duplicate it like this. We can just delete this one. Okay, now the circle uh, like animation, that's actually pretty well done. Let me just make a circle. Give it the same stroke width again. Let's see what this looks like. I think this is aligned like well. All right, so we can just group this. Let's just make it into the width first. Like maybe if we make it a little bit more wide than it is high, we can make it a little bit crazier, I guess. A little bit more unique. Maybe like this. And then we can just uh, make sure that it's overlapping again because it's a round shape. So we can just let it overlap three pixels on every side again. So we can just press plus six pixels in width and plus six pixels in height. All right, so um, we're almost there, I think. Uh, just a few more things. I don't wanna replicate this because it's something for another tutorial, but we can use this, this here, this bar here. And then I think we can call it a day and go drag, drag this back into Photoshop. Okay, so this same thing here, this is just, uh, I think a barbed wire. We can actually use it. I think I have an illustrated document with barbed wire as well, or I think these are thorns actually. Yeah, let me just grab the barbed wire uh, as a placeholder because it's quicker for me. Okay, same thing here. Uh, I'm just gonna go and create a rectangle and we're gonna cut these in half. So the rectangle is the same height as our uh, barbed wire. So what we can do is if we go to properties and make sure that the anchor point is here at the top. So if we scale the height, uh, height uh, and uh, make it half, so we can just press slash two, this will be divided by two. And let's just make a copy of our uh, barbed wire and a copy of our rectangle. Okay, with the square selected, let's just make them green and orange or something so you can actually see what we're doing uh, and i have two barbed wires here by the way uh, so that's one and this is two let's click on the first barbed wire and the orange square and click on the intersect option here oh uh, we need to make sure these are uh, compound paths first so i'm going to select them press command eight and if we intersect those 
we are left with two different uh, shapes or two different like uh, barbed wire threads, I guess. And if we rotate this around, we can use this as our filler shape here. And let's just make a quick little square here. So with this square here, uh, I'm going to do something similar. So I'm going to align them to the left here and divide the width by two and duplicate it over here. And now we can just align the barbed wire to the middle of this square and this one to the other one by pressing this once, make it a key object like this. And I think it's a little bit too empty now. So I just want to duplicate it, I, guess, I think. So group this, put it here, and then put it here and do the same thing like I did before. All right, so, and if we cut this off a little bit, let's see if this works. I guess it kind of does for now. Uh, so then I'm going to show you how to create this and make this uh, align a little bit nicer. So firstly, I want to go and make the like main image here. So we know how much space we have left here in the bottom corner or in the middle here. Um, so the first, we should do the text here, which is lost and make it the lightest, I think like this. And here again, make it 70% height. And let's just make this spacing a little bit higher. So the letters will be separate. Uh, let's just make it outlines and group it. And here again, we can just create a square in the full width of this. Or we can just even duplicate this because I really like the, uh, to make it a little bit more consistent in terms of style. So if we just duplicate this whole uh, thing, uh, we can easily align these squares with our actual guides. And we can just delete the I'm feeling lost part. Make sure that the bottom here, let's just deselect this square first. And now we can, oh, align this uh, with the other square. We can cut this and go into this group. Press it, uh, place it in place and align it with the rectangle. All right, and then there's the big picture. Okay, and I want to face. I want to have some space in underneath here. Can just put this straight down. Align it with this one. Okay, so I think this should align here. And then if we create a like big square. Okay, so I want to have this align first. So all right. And now we can just create a big square here or a big picture frame, I guess. Like this. And then I want to have a line going here. So this will be a little bit like higher up. So let me just like create a small, like I guess sketch almost. Make sure that it's 50 pixels wide uh, because it's a, like that's like the same width as this 50% square. Like this and duplicate it and put it on the side. Extend all the way to here. Uh, and now we need to make sure that there's actually a space between here as well. And now I'm not sure because, okay, yeah, we can use a bigger space. Because otherwise, I want to have the space between this image area equally everywhere, um, like this. All right, so now the only thing that we still need to do is, uh, I think I'm going to go and lose this part uh, and then just go with this. So this is divided in two squares. I'm just going to divide them by two, like this. And we can fill them up. So the first one is danger, like 
sheared rectangles. So what I'm just going to do is make a rectangle, go to transform, shear, make it 20, 20 degrees because that's... Where did we do that again? I am not really sure anymore. Oh yeah, yeah, here. And we can just turn it on its side, align it to the top here, scale it so it fits the uh, thing in the middle here. Um, but what I do want to do first is I want to have a square here in the middle. And I want to have these scaled to the edges here. So there is still space between these two uh, like sections, I guess. So, okay, now this is properly aligned. Let's just duplicate it and put it all the way to the bottom. And now we can just make a blend out of this again. So we go to Object, Blend, Make. And I think I want to increase it a little bit or maybe like, yeah, okay. So what I want to do is I want to grab these. So I have the top anchor points of both these shapes. And if we press up, we actually may increase the width of these uh, rectangles. And let's just put this one down to here, this one down to here. And as you can see that this is not properly like uh, spaced out. So what we want to do is we're going to go grab the rectangle here, actually put it to the front, select the blend here and press command seven. And what that does is make a clipping mask. So now it's basically like only visible inside the square or inside like the rectangle. Okay. So now in terms of this, um, okay, I want to move this to the side here, I think. Make sure that this uh, will overlap. Perhaps then we can do, hmm. I'm not sure if I want these dread shapes in here, to be honest. They feel kind of cluttery, I guess. So let's just duplicate this here. Make sure that this will intersect. And then we basically have the spacing here and we can just drag this into the width here and we can remove this from here. And I think I want to have these be like this and I want to, merge these together still. Um, not sure what was happening there, but all right. And now we can, I think get this text. So entity, uh, liveness. And I want to reset the type to like this one, but then we want to make it regular and then the height to 70%. And if we scale this all the way down, make sure that it aligns. Uh, let's just create a rectangle here. That's like from this anchor point to this anchor point. And let's make sure that this is actually properly like aligned like so. And align this text inside of here. And enter one, two, three, four, five spaces. One, two, three, four, five spaces. Uh, make sure that we actually make the text centered here. And now we can align it like this. And we can delete this rectangle. And now we can increase the spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, so yeah, we should be good with this. All right. Uh, I think I'm satisfied. I'm like one hour in right now. All right. So now I want to remove the guidelines. So let's just grab one of these like beach squares uh, and then we'll go to select same fill color. And this will basically select all of the uh, beach like squares. So let's just press command X and then pr command F and we can just group these and hide them. And we're going to do the same for the other uh, ones here. All right, so this is the setup so far. Uh, let's just remo remove the uh, black background here and we can drag it into Photoshop. And now that I see it, I still have some guidelines here that we can remove. Uh, and let's just save this. All right, let's just make a new document. Okay, with a new document, let's make a black fill and we're gonna import the uh, Illustrator file. So before we drag this in, uh, let's make sure that we uh, use the right like uh, artboard. And okay, and so before we press okay, uh, let's go to the options here and click on crop to and make that media box and then we press okay 
the actual spacing here is already applied. So what I want to do now is I want to make some quick guides on the in the picture frames. So let me just do that right now. All right, now that we have that, we can just make uh, the rectangles based on the guides. And these will serve as like clipping mask uh, objects. So this will be main image. This one will be bottom left. All right, let's go back into the Photoshop file here. See if we can select these and we can just duplicate them, I think. And we need to clip this to main image. Let's just align it properly first. Uh, and I think we should align it a little bit. Uh, we need to scale it up, I think. Oh no, I think we're fine actually. Uh, we need to put the edges and borders here on the top. And I need to have these not as a stroke, but as a fill like this. Uh, and I want to make sure that it's actually like black and white so we can recolor this uh, properly later. So I'm just going to go and grab a threshold. Actually, no, I'm not going to do a threshold. I'm just going to go and grab a gradient map. And then we can just drag the white in. Like this. And I think we should be good with that. Let's drag the other ones in. All right, so uh, I dragged all of the images in and this is a really important reminder. I'm not sure if, as a, if SFX uh, has done this or not, but make sure if you use images like this in your panel designs or whatever, that you are using images that you are allowed to use. So ask the uh, creator of the image, I, because I think this is from Malavida on Instagram uh, and you just simply cannot use this in your own design without any consequences if this is for a commercial purpose uh, and in this video i'm just doing it to like uh just for fun uh, but yeah, if you know the original uh authors of the images please uh credit them where it's due uh and don't use images uh that you're not allowed to use in your commercial work that being said let's go with another gradient map dragging the white again to increase the contrast uh, maybe even the black. All right. Um, so now I think we're just going to grab the color purple from here. And we can actually change the white here to the same pur purple. So let's see what code that is. Copy the hex and paste it in. And actually inverting this is actually cooler in my opinion. Let's see what it looks like without the guides. All right, this should be fine. Um, okay, in terms of where we're at right now is I think we're, we can actually start texturing this. So let's just group this and call it content. And I think I wanna go and add a subtle glow to this. So let's just duplicate the edges and borders, call it glow. And we'll blur this with a Gaussian blur of maybe three pixels, five, six, six is actually fine. And what I like to do when I glow my objects is add a quick little noise layer. Um, so if you want to learn how to do these quick noise layers, there's a tutorial for this on my channel, which is called uh, Photoshop Actions. And it will teach you a lot more about them and how to use them. But now there's a grainy overlay. Um, and actually what I want to do is I want to go and create another noise layer here. So for the sake of the video, let's just show you how I use this action. So I'm going to go and shift backspace, which will bring up the fill menu, click 50% gray, go to filter noise, add noise, and let's grab 20%, uh, maybe now like 10. And let's go and put it over the content so we can actually see if we can do something with the blend mode in places where it's uh, purple and then duplicate it again to see if we can do something in the places where it's dark. Maybe if we use a pin light. Okay, so now that it's super grainy, um, uh, so now that it's super grainy, I just want to texturize this uh, a little bit more and then color correct it where it's due. So let me just grab a texture from my resource packages that I have here on my uh, computer. Grab a grunge texture from Black Market. Use a gradient map to make it black and white. All right, and if we put this to screen, you'll see that some of the like grunge effects are coming through. 
Um, so the last thing that I want to do is grab the whole uh, image here uh, without the grunge texture. So uh, I'm just going to group this artwork, make it into a smart object, and add some displacement. So we'll go to filter, distort, displace, grab a 20 by 20, and then I'm going to grab one of the grunge maps from Black Market again. Now you can get these from Trash Machine. And move it back a little bit. All right, and I think we're done. Uh, now that I look at it, there's something something went wrong here with the spacing. Um, but yeah, that's all good. Uh, this was more uh, to give you a feeling of my work process and how I would go about redesigning uh, your artworks. Um, so yeah, thank you SFX for uh, sending this in and remind to use only the images uh, that you're allowed to use. So don't use copyrighted stuff or other people's stuff in your uh, designs. Um, unless you paid for it or the author knows about it, of course. <laughs> so I want to take the time in this video to thank my patrons. Uh, so if you don't know, if you become a patron, you'll get a 15% uh, discount in the Dreadlabs web store, as well as access to all of the project files from all of my videos, uh, including this one. On top of that, you'll also get a cool Discord role for, for our server. Uh, so yeah, if you want to have your design featured in this video series, uh, join us on Discord and send it over to me. So if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.